Hello and welcome back to Obcast. Today we're going to talk about shoulder dystocia, which really is an obstetric emergency that can be difficult to predict. Now in terms of what shoulder dystocia is, it occurs when the fetal head is born but routine manoeuvres fail to deliver the shoulders. And what's happening here is that there's a bony impaction, either the anterior shoulder behind the pubic symphysis or the posterior shoulder behind the sacral promontory. So we have a look here. We can either have the anterior shoulder stuck behind the pubic symphysis, which is occurring in this photo, but also the posterior shoulder can be stuck behind the sacral promontory in some cases. The reason it's important is that um, there's many associated complications. Most importantly, the risk of fetal hypoxia and subsequent hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Now, historically, we thought, that, well, we thought that the pH dropped precipitously with every minute that shoulder dystocia occurs. And there's previously been figures like 0.15 um, of pH every minute, but newer studies suggest it's probably more like 0.01 per minute, the drop in pH. But time certainly is important, and the head-to-body um, delivery interval certainly is the key predictor and outcome in shoulder dystocia. Other important complications include fetal birth trauma, such as brachial plexus injuries, which can be transient or permanent, clavicular or humeral fractures, as well as maternal birth trauma. Now, the pathophysiology of fetal hypoxia in this case is a, is a little unclear, but, the th but it may include any one of the following. So compression of the umbilical cord uh, against the, the abdomen and, and of, the, of the baby, um, compre compression of the fetal neck vessels against the perineum and also premature placental separation. All these things are thought to play some role in the development of fetal hypoxia. Now in terms of the management of shoulder dystocia, there are standardised algorithms that exist and I will show you one a little bit later but they really are aimed at obstetric practitioners or those working around pregnant women frequently um, and not so much the reluctant or very infrequent obstetrician. The goal really in shoulder dystocia is to deliver the baby within five minutes. And, we, and from studies we know that a pH less than seven and the rate of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy is really low, sort of around one in 200 if it's done within this time frame. Now to keep things simple, um, I think the key steps really are first of all to call for help really because this can be difficult and it can be a protracted attempt at delivery, but also because there's more obstetric and neonatal complications with shoulder dystocia, and that might be a risk and of PPH or even the need for more advanced neonatal resuscitation with a prolonged time to delivery. The first thing to do is to lay the woman flat, bring her legs up, knees to nipples. Now, you don't need to put the woman into lithotomy. It really is just about flexing up the hips and knees um, and this um, flattens out and causes more lumbar lordosis just to try and improve the amount of space for the baby to be delivered. You can see that happening in the picture there. The next thing to do is to, is to use suprapubic pressure. Now you can see in the picture the hand pushing down on the maternal abdomen just above the pubic symphysis and this can be done in a constant or even rocking fashion depending on what is uh, effective. And throughout this stage, both with lying the woman flat and bringing her legs up and, caught, and using suprapubic pressure if that hasn't allowed delivery of the baby, it's important the mum is continuing to push at this stage and facilitate the birth with her own maternal effort. Now if this isn't working, I think the next option is to, is to roll the woman on all fours and then try and deliver the posterior shoulder. And at times, that's um, just a really simple manoeuvre to do and quite effective. I'm often asked how you get a woman with advanced pregnancy to quickly roll on all fours. And the truth is, you just tell them very clearly that you're trying to deliver the baby, the baby is stuck and you need them to get straight on all fours. And they will do that in the absence of an epidural very quickly. Now, in terms of the success rates of these simple manoeuvres, 
probably 90% of shoulder dystocia will resolve with the above techniques, which is the reason I think for the simple instructions for those people dealing with childbirth and its complications extremely infrequently. But just remember, as previously mentioned, that both postpartum hemorrhage and neonatal resuscitation are both more likely to be uh, to occur or need to be managed um, in this setting. I wanted to briefly bring up one of the more advanced management algorithms for shoulder dystocia. And this is a very common uh, mnemonic for shoulder dystocia, which is helper. And we're going to talk through them each briefly just to understand how they fit into management and what the principles are. So call for help is reasonably self-explanatory. E, evaluate for episiotomy. So an obst obstetrician or someone working frequently in obstetrics may do an episiotomy purely to allow more access um, of, for their own hand to help internal rotational manoeuvres, but this is commonly not required. L for legs or McRoberts maneuver. McRoberts maneuver is exactly what we described earlier, is lying woman flat, bring her legs up in a knees to nipples orientation. P being suprapubic pressure we've discussed. E being enter and, and perform rotational maneuvers. Now, up until this point, the goal has been to try and increase the diameter of the birth canal and reduce the biacromial diameter of the fetus. But the rotational maneuvers as demonstrated in the picture there are really just about trying to turn the baby um, and move their anterior shoulder around so that it slips under the pubic symphysis. And there's a number of ways it can be done, trying to turn it both anti-clockwise and clockwise with one or two um, hands operating and they're the different rotational maneuvers which we don't need to go into further detail on. The last two R's are to remove the posterior arm, which again then allows a reduction in the bisochromial diameter, which but can be technically tricky to do if it's not something you've trained or done before. And finally, rolling the patient onto her hands and knees. So the helper mnemonic is useful for exams. It's useful for those who do this more frequently, and it's an excellent algorithm. But I think remember the basics if this is something you deal with incredibly infrequently, being call for help, lie flat with legs up, suprapubic pressure, then roll on all fours. So that's all I wanted to say about shoulder dystocia. Thanks very much for listening.